So Hex just recently made a video, uh, I think it was during her stream, but point being is that she made a video that was going over her frustrations as a newer player. And in particularly, it was about Dr. Ratio. At least it was disguised as Dr. Ratio. So a lot of the creators and community picked that a certain type of way. This video is my reaction to that, but I do want to make something clear at the beginning of the video is that I completely agree with her in the sense of the community part. And I go like, I go over that a lot in this video, but main point being is that that is something that needs to be brought to the attention of a lot of other people, especially the community, is that this isn't so much about Dr. Ratio. I learned that after speaking with her, after the both of us finish streaming. This is more so about the community and how they perceive or give information and advice to the newer player. I want you guys to keep that in mind while you're watching throughout this video. But yeah, just have fun. I have a lot of good little quips. But without further ado, I won't take up too much more of your time because this is an hour long. Yeah. Three. Dose. Sani Ichi Ichi. That's that's one in, in Japanese, right? That, that's what Naruto taught me. If I'm wrong, blame Naruto. What's up, you guys? My name is Hex Juice, and I am here to talk to you about the absolutely abysmal state of the new player experience in Honkai Star Rail. As a newer player myself, I have discovered how difficult it can be to get into the game. I have seen a lot of the pitfalls that people fall into at the advice of guide makers <coughs> building. Hey, hey, yo, wait. <laughs> listen, listen. Hex mamas, you can't. Which guide makers? All right, let me, let me. Which guide makers? It ain't me. It ain't me. Right? 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 Like, we're, it's not me, right? You know what I'm saying? Nah, it's got to be somebody like Destiny, maybe Rihu. We could, we could throw Sevi in the mix, right? I'm trying to name anybody that's not me, right? You, you, you can even name Goba if you wanted to, but it definitely ain't me. As, as long as we're on the same page there. <laughs> Zyox, maybe, you know what I'm saying? But not me, bro. I think Dr. Ratio is a complete scam. And I want to talk about how- Whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> building Dr. Ratio is a complete scam. And- Bruh. Hex, we got a no chat. Just, this is me and you right now. No. No. Why? How? What do you, what do you, I know, I know you made the tweet and they're like, all right, we're going to, we're going to like get in the call or, or whatever, right? Like we're just going to. I'm going to fix up your Akron. You know what I'm saying? Like, we can make an Akron team. Beautiful Akron team, right? Where did I go wrong? What what possessed you to think that ratio was a skin? You know what it is? I bet you, I bet you it was the hyper carry. That's what it is, right? Someone told you to get ratio and just hyper carry him. Give him Sparkle. Give him Team Yoon. Maybe give him Pela. And now you're facing some struggles with this Dr. Ratio, right? That, that's what I feel. Maybe, you, maybe you're going to go over that. You're going to elaborate that in the video. But that's what I feel right now. You were listening to me. You would have the second best ratio in Honkai Star. I'm just saying, like my my ratio is creme de la creme. That's it. <laughs> and I want to talk about how this will continue to affect the community in the future. It is something that I am concerned about as someone who is getting more and more into Honkai Star Rail. I've been really, really enjoying the game since I got Acheron and stopped using Dr. Ratio. <laughs> oh my <laughs> gosh. Tenuous. But I hope you guys enjoy. I have a lot of thoughts about this, and I know that this might. That she does. She's she's hyper carrying ratio. That sounds like Mr. Poke's alley, man. I'm not gonna lie to you, Chief. In some ways, be a bit of a hot take, but I do it out of all of the love and respect for the community possible. So I hope that you will hear me out. Like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you think down below, and I hope that you enjoy this snippet of my stream. Subscribe. <laughs> I hope that you enjoy this snippet of my stream. Subscribe! The new play I'm not gonna lie to you, I fuck with it. I where is Rogue? Someone at Rogue. That has that feels like Rogue. That feels that feels a lot like Rogue. Right? That that feel like Rogue, but the it's the beat, bro. Right? Oh, oh we're, gonna, we're gonna dissect this just for a minute. This is the black guy. I mean, all right, hold on. I'm gonna dissect this real quick. I hope that you enjoy <laughs> this snippet of my stream. Subscribe! This right here, the, the instant yell subscribe, and then my favorite part. What do you think down below? And I hope that's her that theme you song. I need the whole thing. Snippet of my stream. Subscribe! It's the bat yell, bro. Like, you know how they have a bat signal, right? 
she has she has the bat yell that that sends me it's the song the song someone linked me the song i've never heard that a day in my life i'm not stalling wait a minute okay you know what fuck y'all can i not appreciate can i not appreciate the song it's just the scream and then the beat starts to drop. I'm still stalling. You know what, bro? Karma. Fuck you up. <laughs> the new player experience in Honkai Star Rail is very poor. A lot of y'all forget that people have not all played since day one. In fact, a lot of people who would keep the game alive and refreshing the community would people be people who have not played since day one. And this is something that I know is very prevalent because all the time I get comments, I get chat messages. Well, why don't you have this? It's been there since day one. Why don't you have that? It's been there since day one. And people like actually, I think actively forget that there are people who could play Honkai Star Rail who have not played since it released. And that's okay. I could agree it's with all that. Right because yeah, definitely. Realistically, obviously a lot of us in some form or fashion are refugees from Genshin Impact. The difference with Honkai Star Rail and Genshin are many, but one of the biggest ones is that Honkai Star Rail is significantly more complicated. There is not an elemental system in Honkai Star Rail that pads out damage. Back in my day. Well, okay, wait, and maybe I need to like hear the rest of that, but I don't, I don't fully understand what that means. There's not an elemental system that pads out damage, but Genshin, Gen the elemental reaction system in Genshin doesn't pad it out either, right? Like it's just a, isn't it the same? Like you, you would still need to know what you're doing. I think maybe what it is, she means like hyper bloom in Genshin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, wait, 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 but but that's like five years deep in a Genshin. You know what I mean? Like that's Dendro. Dendro is a whole different because the new player experience. You don't even have Dendro as a new player, so I don't think that's what she means entirely. I think it's the same. Like in Genshin, I think the main difference in Genshin is that because I can start up Genshin right now and like not get touched, right? I can play that game like Dark Souls and it's fine, and I'm able to maneuver around the game physically by just not getting touched, right? I, I can I can manually control what happens in the game. And so the elemental, who would you say? The elemental system in Genshin is the damage and Dendro is king of all damage. So if the elemental system in the game is the damage, isn't that like just equivalent to the game having its own damage? Like in Star Rail, the game has its own forms of damage, which is just the crit value, like doing whatever it is. I can understand it from a sense of like the game Star Rail really doesn't put an emphasis on elements. You use element purely for breaking toughness meter, right? And if the enemy happens to be weak to that element, by all means, great job. If they don't, the game doesn't put an emphasis on it resists that element, especially early on. So I'm not arguing against that, you know, uh, Star Rail's elemental system is a little less new player friendly. I'm just purely trying to understand like the comparison between Star Rail and Genshin here in, in like Genshin is easier for the newer player element wise, because I don't I don't think that's the case. But maybe, maybe I just haven't played Genshin so long that it's different now. I had a relatively well bu built Tu Tao. I had a shittily built Xingqiu, and I could explode basically anything. The, ar the, the artifacts were not nearly as important in Honkai Star Rail. To be fair, as a forced Hu Tao main, that's just Hu Tao. I'm gonna keep it a buck. I clear everything in the game with Hu Tao. Everything in the game is cleared with Hu Tao. If they're resistant to fire, I clear it with Hu Tao. Every everything in the game is clear with Hu Tao. Easy. Force is because because I didn't I stopped playing the game at a certain point. So all the characters that are great and awesome, I have them on my account. I don't have them built. And I also didn't finish Sumeru. So anything post Sumeru, like I have Al Haytham, he's not built. So by default, if I want to clear anything, I have to use the only character that I have that is built, which is Hu Tao. That's why I say a forced Hu Tao main. So as a forced Hu Tao main, Hu Tao clears everything like free. So I want to say that's a testament to that. We already know Xing Shou is pretty strong as he is, but those two are very strong, right? Is there anything else that we could compare that? I'm really trying to figure out like the comparison there between that and Star Rail, but those two are really fucking strong. Le Lisa is free with uh, defense reduction. Thank you for the follow. Dendro MC Lisa, Barbara Solos, Rhea, ooh. I'm not, that sounds like a fun team. I'm not gonna lie to you, bro. I, I kind of wanna, I kind of wanna play that. Yo, TJ, what's popping? Four star hyper bloom teams are so unfair. I, we might go back to Genshin. 
I want to play with that. So you kind of have to have really good artifacts, and and you have to you have to farm relics a lot more seriously. And the problem that I want to bring up about this is that a, God, relics are worse in this game <laughs> because. Ah! I'm gonna rewind it. I want her to finish her entire relic sentence before I respond. You have to, you have to farm relics a lot more seriously. And the problem that I want to bring up about this is that a. God, relics are worse in this game. <laughs> because of the reality that there are so many more stats that can be on relics than in Genshin. Farming relics in Honkai is miserable. And the other thing is, is that because relics have a much higher level of importance in Honkai Star Rail, it means that the new player experience is naturally a bit more unpleasant. You have to have relics to do good damage. You cannot really farm relics until at least level 60. You can't farm relics at max efficiently until level 65. And that takes months. And so what that leaves is players who are unable to get damage, especially out of certain characters that really, really, really need high relic quality for months. Because so many players have been playing since day one, and because most people who make guides or make recommendations to players, A, both have played since day one, and B, yeah. sort of do have the assumption that everybody else has played since day one. It means that the advice that you are given, it's not particularly usable. Let me, let me pause it right here. So I want to break this down in a way that maybe we could explain this a little easier. Before, Hex mentioned that relics she felt that relics were a little harder to attain in this game or more important than genshin i do think relics in this game compared to genshin are definitely more important but i don't think that they're harder to attain and in fact if i'm not mistaken aren't the stats the same if not less maybe what it is i think what it is is that you don't have an off piece i've, I've heard a lot of people saying that because you don't have an off piece like you do in genshin building the actual character to completion is a lot harder it feels a lot harder because you don't have that off piece but in reality, that's not the case. Now, what this comes down to is this completely comes down to the fact that, and I think Poke recently released a video on that, but I don't know if he addressed this particular topic. This solely comes down to the fact that newer players after 1.6 or 1.4, whenever the PlayStation update was, when they played the game, when they started the game, there were no new guides for them, right? We didn't really put out any new guides on like, this is what you should do. This is what you should focus on because we've already made it. They've, they're already on our channel. They're already circulating through YouTube. If they search up, you know, uh, TL40 guide in Honkai Star Rail, our videos should pop up. With that in mind, this purely comes down to the player. To be able to gather that information on your own, I will say it, it is at the fault of the game, but Genshin has this fault too, where they don't really put emphasis on when and what you should be doing, how you should be doing it. In Star Rail's case, I think this comes down to the player. This is, as the internet likes to say, a skill issue, but I do think overall, this issue is not an actual problem. No one, and ironically, we were having this conversation with Chaotic. Ryu and I were having this conversation with Chaotic yesterday uh, or the day before yesterday, something like that. You don't need to do maximum character effort grindy stuff to do the things in the game that are casual, right? Your story, your sim universe, especially sim universe, whatever else it is, right? Progressing through the game until you get to that point, TO60, TO65, it's not required. Grinding for relics isn't something that I expect any new player to do. And in fact, that was one of the things that I mentioned in my mistake, like the top mistakes that I made. That was the thing that I mentioned in my video was that instead of going for traces, I, I stopped, right? I did 888s and then I stopped and then I went for relics. So while I was really good relic wise, I'm still really good relic wise, uh my traces i'm playing catch up now on a lot of the characters but ideally nah there's a lot more that you should be focused on as a newer player that are not relics a lot of your damage that's for characters is not from your relics it's coming from your traces it's coming from you know the light cone the level things like that you could passively because the game the game still gives you relics right whether or not they're relics that you want right? Because they're, they're RNG. You might get a crit. You might not get a crit when the game gives it to you. All of that stuff, you can just throw on your character. If I were to boot up a brand new thing right now, and then I, I went from all of uh, Herda Space Station to Bellabog with a main team, I could just put the relics on there and then we could call it a day and you'd be fine, right? The relics being put onto these characters isn't something 
that I would emphasize a lot on. I, w I wouldn't put a lot of emphasis on whether or not relics are make or break for some of these characters. I don't know. It, it, it's a, it's definitely something where like I'm trying to keep the new player in mind because a new player shouldn't be concerned with this kind of stuff. Not not as quickly or early on. A new player, you're not TL65 once you hit. Like when you hit TL60, TL65, you're no longer a new player. And unless you grinded for three days straight to get to that point, you're no longer a new player. We, you, you should be able to maximize and farm efficiently to get exactly what you're looking for. But this does also come in, I said, but like 99 times, this comes into play with how people are looking at the game where they're not focused on building a team. They're, they're playing it like Genshin. I want this character. 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 And ooh, I want to swap this character out for this character. And they smash it all together. Admittedly, and I don't argue against this at all. Star Rail is a much more in investment type of game. You, you need to know what you're investing in because wasted investment or wasted resources in this game sucks dick. I feel like HSR is way less restrictive because you can auto farm and select main stats. I do think it's way less restrictive. And again, this kind of goes into like more along the lines of like what the player is aware of they should be focused on or not. And it goes from there. At least in HSR, you can build up your characters and they can do a lot of damage, traces and ascensions. Light cones and relics can start coming in later on. That's true too. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, that's true too. It just, again, it, it really comes down to how you as the player are investing into your account. That's something that I, I've always said when it comes to Star Rail is that you need to be able to look at this and invest into it in a in a uh i call them smart free to plays but that sounds a little derogatory because it insinuates the the ones that are not in the category of smart or dumb and i don't want to say that so i'll say efficient free to play players a really good example of an efficient free to play player and i'm shocked tech tone that that man is a whale through and through but if anyone needed to look at a very good if not perfect example of how a free-to-play player's account should function and look like, I would just point at Tectones. Every character that he's wanted for his account, he's gotten. Any signature light cone that he would have wanted, he could have gotten. Anything that he wants to use, like a free-to-play, <laughs> yeah. um, like a good night sleep or anything like that, he, he has it. The builds, he works on them, and then he gets it. He's very efficient at playing this game on a free to play level. He used the pools that were gifted to him. That's not, that's not breaking free to play. Guys, we're not, we're not, that no way. If someone else gives you or gifts you something, it is what it is. He dipped into the gifted pass, Jades. He never got battle pass, so he is a day one player and never sped up his progression. What's the gifted pass? Oh, like, yeah, they gifted you Jades, right? Someone else gave him Jades? That, he's still free to play. There's no free to play plus. Yeah, no, Spooky, 100. If someone gives you 100,000 Jades, you are still free to play. You did not spend any money. That is free to play. Battle Pass is 30 days of progression for $10. To me, that's free to play. I, I know that that's kind of like ironic. You're saying like spend 10 bucks or whatever, but I'm of the firm belief. If you're playing this game, if you're investing a bunch of time in a Star Rail and you complete the Battle Pass, you go from level one to level 50 or level one to level 70 and you're broke ass doesn't buy the fucking battle pass even if you only buy the ten dollar one if you don't buy that you're wasting your time you do you know how many resources you waste because you want to stick to this whole free to play mantle and and just oh yeah i'm free to play by the way and then you turn around and you bitch about resources you complain about not being able to build characters you don't have the light cones it's because you didn't bro you spent all fucking month going <laughs> yeah. from level one to level 70 and you don't have $10 to, to collect your reward, you're gonna, it's, that's, that's like going into work every day for an entire month to do your job. And then you leave without getting the paycheck. What the, f why, why would you do that? Why would you do that? That don't make no sense. You're in, you're the only game you play daily and you're like, nah, I'm not gonna give it 10 bucks, bro. Even, even though I completed everything, I did my job to the T, I put in mad 40 hours a week. I don't want a paycheck. Yeah, no, no, no. Star Rail, you can keep your paycheck because I do this for the heart of free to play. I'm free to play through and through. I do this for the heart, for the soul, for the community. I don't, you can give that money to somebody. Give those resources to anyone else. I don't need it because I'm free to play to the day that I die. Come on, man. <laughs> yes, Tectone is the case study 
of running a free to play account. He regardless. And that, that's another thing that people don't understand. Just because you're free to play doesn't mean that you can't have limited characters or aeolons or light cones or anything like that. It, it just means that you don't spend to get it. If in the event, let's say that a free to play player had Destiny's luck. Destiny gets five stars back to back in the first 10 pulls. We just saw her get four different five stars between 10 pulls each, right? Like 10, 10, 10, a bunch of different five stars. You're going to tell someone they're not free to play because they just happen to be super fucking lucky. Nah, that doesn't matter. If, if someone's free to play, regardless of how they got it, they got it free to play. You, you cannot take that away from them because it's unrelatable to your account, your RNG. You got some EO RNG. Your shit is ass, right? You got RNG like me. You can't take someone else's RNG away because they have better RNG than you and they're still free to play. It doesn't matter. Let me get back to the video. One of the biggest things that I was told was to build Dr. Ratio. In most ways, that makes a lot of sense. Dr. Ratio is a free five star. The problem as a new player with Dr. Ratio is multifaceted. So he needs other characters to be good. He needs really good relics to be good. And it takes a very, 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 very long time for players to get to the point where they can actually farm relics that are good enough for him. And it sucks. It sucks for new players because you are telling them to build a character that is not going to be worth it until very late game. In no way is Dr. Ratio free to play friendly. I don't, I don't agree with that at all. I don't agree with that at all. Ratio is one of the few characters that you can get the a damage dealer, right? A damage dealer. He's one of the few characters that can actually use the free MOC light cone uh, cruising in the Stellar Sea. You can S5 that for free. You don't have to use anything but time. And that those are your stats right there. And you're done. If she's comparing Ratio to Acheron, that's even worse because Acheron doesn't have the capability of attaining these things that Ratio does. Ratio can use pieces like like Musketeer, right? Four piece Musketeer, two piece Musketeer. I'm trying to think of things that the game just gives you. Even when you get to Pinnacony, they give you follow ups. They they give you five star follow up uh, relics that you could invest into. So it's it's not like you need to go out of your way to build ratio. What I'm what I'm imagining here is that she just doesn't have a ratio team, and that that's not a a fault of hers inherently because whoever she's listening to, which I'm just going to assume is the community, hyper carry this and hyper carry that. You only need Bronya, Sparkle, Ruan Mei, and Ting Yun. You don't need anyone else. You don't have to worry about anything else. Just run Bronya and Sparkle, and then Ratio will be perfectly fine. That might be the issue. If I if I can look at her account, that might be the issue. She has Topaz? Nah, this, Hex, this might be, this, this might be player diff. This might be player diff. Admittedly, though, not actually Topaz could get away with using a different light cone, right? Like you could get away with using what's the name of that light cone? The hunt or or sword play. One of the two could use sword play. One of the two could get away with using sword play. And then you can give cruising in the seller seat to the main DPS there. But ideally, Ratio doesn't have the five debuffs he needs. He doesn't need five debuffs. You just gotta hit that. You gotta hit that shot. But ideally, because I'm, I'm really trying to think of this, right? You have ratio. You have Topaz. Now she has Pela, right? Now she has Pela, but she's using Pela for the Acheron team, which makes sense. So then he still needs something else. In this particular case, how would you go about achieving that final stack, right? Which is a debuff. Fire MC. Put a sustain on the team that inflicts the enemy with a debuff. Fire MC was Acheron. No, she's using uh, Gallagher with Acheron. And if anything, swap it, right? If if you're using Fire MC with Acheron, then use Gallagher with Dr. Ratio, right? Dr. Numby. If you're using Gallagher with Acheron, then use Fire MC with uh, Dr. Numby. Yeah, no, M MOC, you're right, Spooky. M MOC is not made for new players. That That is not something that newer players should be trying to achieve or attain. It's a good it's a good DPS check for you, for your account. It's a good DPS check for you. No Pela on the selector. No, dang, but there was Pela on the previous selector, right? For two, no. Pela, Pela was on one of the last two selectors. I know that because my account got a Pela. Which one was it? She wasn't. Pela was on the Pokemon event. 1.4, 1.6, 2.0. Okay, now we're in 2.1. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I know she's on the banner right now, which, you know, now she's in the shop. That makes sense. But her only selector was on 1.4. <sighs> okay, if, if that's the case from 
where Hex is now, I would assume she's been playing since 1.4 or 1.6. If she missed out on the Pokemon event, that is unfortunate. Free to play players will have him, but that does not make a character inherently free to play friendly. Yes, he can eventually explode like every single thing in the entire game. And that's really fun and cool and poggers. Like the reality is, is not every character requires that level of investment in order to be usable. My account is level 64, not even 65. I have mm -hmm. farmed relics approximately four times ever. My Akron has horrendous stats. They are buffed right now because of Spark. Time out. Your Acheron has over 3k attack. You have a little bit of speed, which is irrelevant, and you have defense stats of 1k, which is pretty standard for DPS characters to survive. You have 66% crit rate and 206% crit damage with the light cone in mind. She's in simulated universe. Okay, okay, okay. I have to see this outside of Sim then because yeah. this isn't a fair thing for her to like pull up if I can't see the actual stats. Having her light cone off rip you're already over 100% crit damage. So at the minimum, she has to have, I'm assuming a crit rate body piece, right? Because getting crit rate 66% in simulated universe, that's a really weird stat. So she has to have somewhere between like 40 to 50% crit rate with 100-ish, maybe 120 crit damage because the light cone plus her traces gives her enough crit damage to reach 100% for free. Sparkle and some of my... Hunt three buff okay realistically speaking my akron is not well built and akron does wait go back was that was that light speaking. cone okay the light cone's level 80 so she she is at the point she did say co 64 so Meaning she is at the point akron of like final well ascension built. and akron does very decent damage and has completely transformed my account i have been able to clear content that i j i could not do before you do have to invest in every character but the level of investment is different and if you don't this is an Acheron difference. I'm not going to lie to you. Now, now I see what you're saying, Sarah. You're saying, you were saying earlier that she's comparing ratio to Acheron. I see what you're saying. You can't do that. I mean, you can, they, they, they ain't like, no one's going to stop you from doing that. Right. But this is, there's a reason we keep saying like, as, as the sensible guide makers, Acheron is number one. Like she is OP. There's a reason we keep saying that you have, <laughs> and then the, the craziest part about this, the team Hex is using Sparkle, Acheron, Pale, and Gallagher. She's missing damage. She's missing damage and she's doing, she's performing significantly better. The issue is majority of content creators are saying she's not free to play friendly. And that was my biggest issue before Acheron came out. When people kept a lot of content creators, my peers included, and they kept saying, I don't think she's free to play friendly. And we should, we should skip Acheron. I would suggest everyone pull Jing Liu. Jing Liu is proven to be the better character. We already have six plus months of using Jing Liu. We know she's good. We know she's the current top DPS character. Gonna be real hard for Acheron to top Acheron or for Jing Liu to top Acheron. Acheron comes out and then she's fucking busted. Oh, well, you know, Acheron needs her signature light cone. She, she, she's not doing that kind of damage without her signature light cone. She, no, 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 she's not good without her signature light cone. Acheron comes out and there's 20 different fucking showcases showing her with all kinds of light cone. Oh, uh -uh, well, well, maybe we should be using Acheron with, with, uh, you know, honestly, Akron can't use Sparkle. She can't use Sparkle. So uh, by default, she's not going to be as good as Jing Liu. Insert teams not even fulfilling the double nihility requirement and still outperforming Powerpuff Girls. Come the fuck on. Akron's at the top. The irony about that cinnamon is that she's actually the most free to play friendly limited DPS right now. Yes. She's so fucking strong that she turns an account from, in Hex's case, right? Or a, as an example, what felt like a bad <laughs> account to now I can have fun with the game. Should I pull Akron and not Jing Liu? Yo, strange. I'm, I'm going to tell you 100% pull Akron like, every single time. Every single time I'm, I'm going to tell you pull Akron, bro. The only reason I would tell you to not pull Akron is if you really just don't want to play Akron. There's Palos on the banner, Gallagher's on the banner. That's two thirds of your team, right? Or three fourths. That's three fourths of your team right there just by going for Akron. All you need after that point is to literally use the selector and then pick up Gwenaifen. I don't actually understand that. And you're, and, you're, and you're typing in your fingers like, well, every character needs investment. Yeah, no shit. But the reality is, is that some need a lot of investment they do they and do some characters ratio is not one of those characters the damage though. of those characters with like no investment and recommending characters blindly based on an assumed level of investment means that you are telling people not only like unhelpful and bad information that will actively hurt them but also make it discouraging to play the game 
Because I'll be honest, I was pretty discouraged See, for a while I, because I was like, What's funny is I just said that. I said it took her from not having fun with the game, put Akron on the account, now she's having fun with the game. I just said that. Like, I'm building this ratio. Everybody said this ratio was going to be, like, really good for my account. And I hate him with a the passion of and, and fury of a thousand suns, and he does no damage. It would be nice if the recommendations we made kept in mind an actual regular player's experience. The reality is, is the vast majority of Twitch viewers have very high level of investment into the game, into the community. A lot of you guys watch a ton of Honkai Star Rail content creators. It's easy to lose track of the primary player base when the majority of the people that speak in your stream, the majority of other content creators are incredibly sweaty about this game not negative just true it means that there are people who are left out and it is going to prevent this game from growing it is a prop i want to pause real quick i think i don't necessarily agree with with that statement but i don't disagree with it either it's weird uh i do think that the casual audience should be taken into mind but i also think you just need to find <laughs> yeah. the creators you have to find your creator or creators who are going to speak on that most of the community not including hex most of the community gravitate towards the largest creator, right? They gravitate towards the larger creators and then they cling to whatever is being being repeated or said. Most of the larger creators do not think outside of the box when it comes to the game. They don't challenge the principles of the game <laughs> yeah. or what could happen with the game. They all say the same exact shit. Hypercarry this, Powerpuff Girls that, you need one, two, three, and you call it a day. They only change what they say after results, at which, I mean, to be fair, results matter, yeah? But point being is that they change it afterwards. Acheron is a perfect example of that. Most of your creators, not me, but them, have stated Acheron was not gonna be great. No no free-to-play friendly, needs a signature light cone, not gonna be worth it. Just skip Acheron, go for Jing Liu. They immediately changed their mind the moment the creator experience server dropped, right? The moment that dropped publicly, they all changed their mind. Akron is the best character in the game. She's going to break the game. Uh, even Poke said it yesterday, right? He's afraid of <laughs> the implications of what Akron being this strong in the game now could bring to the future of the game. They all have changed their stuff. How we're looking at the game, and I'm saying this like watching her play through Simulated Universe, I'm saying this in a way that like, honestly, you, you could just not have issues with your doctor ratio or any build for that matter and casual players have they like they have the information the information's not not there right am i saying that right the information is out there it just comes down to you finding it and i don't think that every creator's purpose or job should be to you know like let's say that i made a video about acheron then i made a video about acheron specifically for casual slash free-to-play audience at that point that's way too much work if the casual player isn't going to go out of their way to look for that information to inform themselves to become more knowledgeable about what's being said that's where i think the problem occurs because you can't depend on you definitely can't depend on twitch chat to teach you because that's a privilege that only you know notable streamers have right when you're gaining notoriety you're building a community things like that you have to figure it out on your own or at least by asking questions people who don't test in game don't realize ratio of signature is close to 43 to a 43 percent increase in damage hey listen you're talking to the light cone connoisseur. I'm gonna tell everybody to pull on the six light cone banner, right? Uh, win the 50 50 or not, I'm gonna tell you to do it. Will they listen? Probably not, but it is what it is. <laughs> Problem that this community in the, the, the guides and like basically everything about this game is relatively unwelcoming to new players. It, there's a high barrier to entry on a lot of levels. The best thing about the community uh, is I don't that agree. it has incredible content creators. I think that I agree with that though. I agree with that. Honkai Star Rail <laughs> have some of the best, most interesting, hardworking content creators of like any game. And so that brings people in. Tectone is a good entertainer. Mr. Pokey is a good entertainer. Uh, Sevy makes great guides. Braxophone is very sweet, makes good guides. Um, there's a lot of them. Why wasn't I? Lot of why wasn't I mentioned Hex? Huh? Did, did I just, I just, I just slipped your mind. I, I don't make, I don't, I don't make great content. Is that, that's how I'm going to take it now. I'm going to, I'm going to take offense to that one personally, you know? Really, really, really fucking good Honkai Star Rail content creators, but it is so hard to get into the game when so much is assumed. Have you ever gone into like a math class and it was a math class that like you did not belong in, right? Like you, you skipped algebra. I've I've done that in college. 
algebra one and you went to algebra two because they thought you was smart or whatever and then they're telling you shit and assuming a bunch of shit that you're supposed to know and you're like i gotta go back down to algebra one y'all 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 have all these letters in here i was still on long division bitch what is this that's how it feels getting into Honkai Star Rail sometimes, where it's just like there's so much that is being assumed that I understand that it's like, God damn, I don't know how to get into this shit. I'm talking about this. Admittedly, I agree. I, like, I understand, right? Yeah, 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 Shadow. I understand what she's saying, but I don't agree because I know that it's not true. But from her perspective, I understand why she's saying it. The information on how to progress safely or efficiently how to play the game from new player to basic player to veteran player to whatever that don't exist for a lot of these uh, a lot of the newer players the community they go to reddit and they get the same stupid ass information stupid ass advice they're in their twitch chats and twitch is toxic i'm gonna tell you that right now not you guys you guys are cool but twitch chat can be toxic and that's where you get like for instance i've i've watched them talk tech tone into super bad advice and almost fuck his shit up that's just what they do because they're parrots they parrot information from someone else that they've heard from someone else that they think they've heard about and then from the dreams that no one knows about except the dreamer and they parrot that information repeatedly 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 and that's what creates misinformation right you're spreading misinformation the problem for newer players isn't the game the problem for newer players is straight up the community a lot of the community she's right maybe they don't remember what it is to be a newer player but even if they did they're just dumb most of the community says some of the worst shit possible for newer players because in their head, this is this is how it's supposed to be. Oh yeah, man, just run hyper carry. And I know I always bring up hyper carry because it's like the first thing in my mind, but I say that because as you can see, Hex was able to do something with uh, the Acheron team, but not with Ratio. Even though on her account, from what I can tell based off the video, both have hyper carry potential. No one's telling her how to do it. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like the problem is that no one is telling her how to play ratio and this is a fault to hex for not going to the guides on dr ratio and watching a few of them to understand what she should or shouldn't do if she even wants to invest in a ratio before listening to chat and i understand doing this live when you're on twitch you really don't have time to sit there and watch four 25 plus minute videos about dr ratio i get it i really do but when your community or your chat is telling you just do this and they're not answering how to do this it creates the worst type of of advice possible right i could tell you hey akron is the best character in the game done everybody just pull akron but if i don't tell you why if i don't tell you how to make her the best or what she should be doing you, you're gonna be sitting there looking real stupid granted akron is op right she's she number one so Maybe using Acheron was a really bad example of that. Ratio is a perfect example of that. Zeal is a great example of that. Daniel is a, a perfect example of this, right? So many people said, pick up Daniel. Daniel is worth it. You have people that are going to, now people are going to start telling Hex, <laughs> yeah. Daniel is better than Dr. Ratio. Waste your resources on Dr. Ratio or on, on uh, Daniel instead of just investing in a Dr. Ratio. You're going to have people tell Hex that I'm calling it now. And she's going to be so pissed off. How am I supposed to do the enhance attack? Oh, uh, well, you need to do the calculus that you didn't want to do for ratio. You got to do that times four now just to get one enhanced basic attack. And you need nine other characters. Do you have Ting Yoon? No, I don't have Ting Yoon. Oh, man, everyone has Ting Yoon. All players should have Ting At least every player in the game should have E6 Ting Yoon minimum. The day you start the game, you should get E6 Ting Yoon. I don't, I don't care how you do it. You should have E6 Ting Yoon. Everybody in the game should have E6 Ting Yoon, E4 Pela. Uh, everyone needs Locha. You, you got to have Locha. You need Locha, and if you don't get Branya in your first five-star pool, you need to start over. Reroll the account. You need Branya, but you also need Sparkle. So when Sparkle gets a rerun, even if you have Branya, go ahead and pull Sparkle. Robin's coming up too. You need to pull Robin. They give some of the the craziest fucking advice from a genuine place of like adoration for this community and for its content. Tight. Actually, a lot of a lot of us are doing that. I know Hex isn't a guide maker, but Hex is going through as a newer player. Rihu is going through as a newer player. I'm going through as a newer player. Like we, we started like free to play accounts, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. um, yo, Arrow, thank you for the, the subby, bro. I appreciate that, man. But yeah, a, a lot of the creators are doing that. Maybe not a lot, a, a handful of the creators are doing that. Smack has his free to play account. He just revealed that about a month ago and he's he's been keeping up with that. So it's, it's less about like the, cre I, I wouldn't blame the creators 
because we're not actually out of touch with the free to play audience or what it is and feels like to be a newer player or a free to play player. We're not out of touch with that all the time. It's the community that assumes what a player should or should not have based on how they perceive free to play players. What pisses me off most <laughs> yeah. about, uh, about chat is they're always trying to min max in 1.1 we were yeah in 1.1.0 1. 1. we were not trying to fucking min max facts as a newer player min maxing was the last thing on our mind because we we couldn't do it there was yeah, <laughs> yeah. your job was to survive we had good enough gear we farmed musketeer because it gave you relics to use on everybody right your dps's your supports and your sustains and you put all that shit on one. But now you have so much, so many things. Y'all, thank you for the follows. I appreciate that. You have so many new people coming into the game and they're hearing, you got to go get this relic set. You need to go to this cavern. You got to go this. You got to go get these traces. You need this light cone. Oh, you got to do this event for this yeah. light cone though. You got to get this too as well. Oh shit. You got to do this planar ornament. Yeah, you got to do a lot of investment. It's, it's just too much. So that's why I'm like, I understand where Hex is coming from. There's a lot of fucking in that she has a whole year of information being constantly dumped on her in chat versus having someone walk her through it and like, hey, you you don't need half the shit that they're telling you to do, right? If you just take your time, I guarantee you had and this is like no no gloating, right? Had Hex come to me or or any of the bros, right? Hex came to any of us and be like, yo, what do I want to start the game? What's the best way to approach it? What do I do? How do I not make as many mistakes early on? And how do I continue to enjoy the game without treating it like homework? Her account will be so much like she would have way more fun with the game without Akron in mind. I love this game. <laughs> I love the community. I love my community. It is important to note that we are making it very difficult for new players to come in. I guess to me, this is sort of a ooh. damn Akron got smashed. Okay, really, this just one shots, right? Or not Akron, uh, Gallagher. One shot, no, it's a man. Oh, it got one of them. <laughs> I want to start talking about Palin. Don't got one of them. Why is it zero percent? Why didn't it die? What is this? This is Sim Universe, right? Why didn't the bug die? And it still killed Palin. Like Palin got to take a turn. That's two boss health bars. No. No. Look, it's one bar. It's it's on one dot. That's the last dot, right? And then it's at 0%. It's dead. It's at 0%. Look at the one on the right. It's supposed to die, right? That's the main boss. The little ones die with the main boss. Oh, no. Oh, man. She got fucked. She got fucked right here. And then it summoned more. Yo, Hex. Hex, man. I feel so bad for you. I feel so bad. You got fucked right there. That was... That was a win. That was a win. That was going to be a dub. And they said, nah, not today. Not making guides specifically, but I want to start making um, certain parts of my content about <laughs> yeah. what the actual experience of playing the game with a character is. And, oh, and I thank you for the follows. I appreciate those. Because if the game stops bringing people in, it's going to be hard for the community to survive. Maybe not this year and maybe not next year. But as time goes on, more uh, new player friendly over, and this game will sort of atrophy into being a game that is primarily full of sweaties and people who have uh, who who won't leave. And I will say that uh, respectfully, what does that remind you of? A game of people who are maybe a bit too dedicated and sweaty and have been playing for a million years and just won't stop Valorant. knowledge problems. What, what community? That does sound like another community that we know of to me. And I don't want this community to be like that. Are we talking about, is she talking about Valorant? I don't want it to be like Honkai Star Rail could never when Zenless Zone Zero comes out or something, you know? When the game only gets more and more League? difficult to get Apex, into, Genshin? When the community we got a lot of those. more and more sweaty and less understanding of the new player experience, that is going to continuously over time hurt the longevity of the game so that's my point i don't know if this was like relatable or helpful and i'm sure a lot of people in the comments are going to be like we don't need to cater to every kind of player but it's like we should cater to like maybe more players though we should cater to players who might like the game but maybe are turned away when their ratio that they were told was going to save our account um is actually horrendous to play and does no damage until you're like level 70 and have been farming relics like every day for a billion years you know what i mean that, that's not very encouraging. So that's the point. Goodbye, YouTube. Like, comment, subscribe. Um, 
So tell me what character you think new players should build. What is the most valuable character? A lot of people were saying Serval, which I, I mean, I guess at the very beginning, yes. But in terms of investment long term, maybe not Serval. I, I, uh, I, I'd like to know. Goodbye. I have a closing thought. I feel like ultimately, ultimately this comes down to a lack of understanding and information, like it's both. There are a lot of things that Hex said that were incorrect factually, but correct from the perspective that she's looking at it at. But it, it's definitely one of those things where, for instance, as I explained before, going over what the community tells a player or a newer player to do versus what an actual new player should be doing. A lot of that relic farming, I heard her mention right there towards the end that she's wasting a lot of time doing relics or grinding for relics and getting nothing from it, which is valid. You're at the point now where you're reaching TL65, TL70. Now you should be relic grinding, but prior to that, you should not have been relic grinding. It should have been the point where your characters, like if, if I were going to make a brand new account, I wouldn't touch relics at all unless I, unless I just felt the luck that day. I wouldn't touch them at all. I would have all of my traces for the two main teams or the, the roster of characters that I'm going to use. Their traces would be minimum 888, but I would be shooting for 10, 10, 10 because you don't have anything else to do besides play through the game and enjoy it. You know, I would have those traces max the fuck out so that when I do get shitty relics, it's a little easier for me to continue to do my damage. But Again, that's something that I know we talked about way earlier on, right? Like 1.0, 1.2, stuff like that. And we didn't really revisit it because that was something we assumed people would just kind of learn or pick up on. I think Star Rail is great for newer players, but I, I think it is a lack of information. I think giving or given what Star Rail offers to newer players, right? You have a free five star, you got two, well, not anymore. Ratio is gone now, right? Doctor Ratio for free is gone. So let's say that someone were to have would have started minimum two patches ago, right? So when ratio dropped for free, no, he's still here. Okay, so if, if ratio is still here, cool. So you have a free five star, regardless of how we feel about ratio or not, right? You have a free five star, regardless of how anyone feels about ratio. You have the capability of achieving or receiving another five star standard banner, five star character, not even having to uh, risk the light cone. You have a standard banner guaranteed character between the levels of uh, level one starting the game to like level 10 or 15, something like that. So just casually playing the game. By the time you finish Hertz of Space Station, you you have a five star, right? You should have the ability to get a five star. If you didn't, you didn't do it correctly. But that, and it's super easy. To, it's not even like grinding for it, right? You just have to make sure you hit what you're looking for, hit the marks. So that's two five stars that you get for free, basically. At, no, not even basically, for free at the beginning of the game. You then get from level uh, 10 up to, was it 55? Level 10 up to 55, you get another batch of standard banner tickets to be able to hit pity on the standard banner. That's two five stars and then a third five star or minimum a light cone, signature light cone, not signature light cone, standard banner light cone. So that's a second opportunity to get some more stuff. Yo, Cisco, then you have enough of the tickets. Hex's account is proof of this, having multiple five star accounts as well as myself um soul destiny all the new accounts that we've started for free to play you have enough premium currency especially right now during the anniversary to guarantee at least two at least two five star characters and on, on the limited banner current uh, limited banner banner right not not if you lose even if you lose a 50 50 you still have enough so if you wanted akron you can definitely get her before she's gone and you have plenty of time to do that this doesn't include playing the game from start to pinnacone that that in itself is a whole batch of other shit that you can get for free i think as a newer player star Rail treats new players great the problem that star Rail has in game is it, it, it there's no walk you through how to be an efficient player right an efficient free to play or newer player anything like that nothing in the game walks you through that and depending on other people to do that might be the worst thing possible because you get really bad advice. And then in this game, investing badly fucks you up for a long time. If you start the game off with bad investment, you're cooked. You 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 have a little bit of time, like right, like if you start the game between level one and level 15, bad investment, you can recover. If you start the game and level one, level 35 or level 40, bad investment, you might be cooked. You might have to start over, right? Because you've done something that you should not have been doing. But ultimately it can be fixed.
it just takes way more time telling me uh she's saying that about ratio without his talents max oh yeah I don't, I don't know i don't know even even without talents being maxed i don't i don't believe in talents needing to be maxed for a character to prove their worth that that's actually what makes me feel the way that i do about characters like blade jing yuen even dr uh not dr ratio dill pickle if i need to take these characters to level 10 to to receive the results or see what i'm supposed to be seeing out of this character that everyone talks about those are negative points in my opinion 888 should be fine 888 should be perfectly fine for a character to do what it needs to do efficiently and then 10 should be like flavor bonus right like if i'm looking for a zero cycle or something like that that's fine but if they're 888 i should be able to three cycle right with the, these particular characters that we're talking about but that's gonna be it hex if you happen to see this long ass video because I, I don't know how i don't know how y'all react to shit i'm just trying it out right i got advice if i'm doing that if you happen to see this video by all means reach out to me we can fix up the account we can go over some things and then kind of like figure out what you should be prioritizing and then pushing from there so that you don't waste any more of your investment or your resources if you have the battle pass like my chat's telling me you have battle pass that's even better because that, that's like so many free resources that a lot of other free-to-play players don't have and it, it just you're good right you can recover quicker when you have more resources and if you know how to use those resources or what to use the resource on it makes it so much easier in ratio's case ratio's a bad bitch that's my guy all right ratio is not bad at to 65 there's zero reason you should have a bad ratio if you just don't like using ratio that's a little different but you have the necessary stuff that i've seen on your account at least to make ratio work in fact the same team you were using for akron you could use for ratio and then he would perform similar uh or great results i don't want to say better because that comes down to like some building stuff but yeah and you have topaz on your account which i'm the topaz guy so that that's a little bias on my part but anyway yeah thank y'all for hanging out with me today i appreciate that I, I don't know how to end off react do i end off reaction videos the same way i can't say my usual outro because it's inappropriate for youtube i don't i can't say my usual outro because it's inappropriate for youtube like the video comment subscribe tell you later i guess that's how i would end that off right yeah yeah, yeah cool